ready to go. Um, I am. I myself had a very nice vacation, so <laughs> I'm uh, ready to get to get back to it. Um, before we begin, let me place our link in the chat. There you go. That's if you. Uh, that's in the chat. If that's our link to our website. If you want to catch up on anything or review anything, uh, all of our videos should be there. All of our previous classes. We are deep within the ninth chapter now, so there's a good eight and a half chapters. Uh, of information that we've covered so far. So uh, yeah, uh, we're actually, we're probably about a year and a half into the class now, if not more. So uh, yeah, just about a year and a half of the, the class. So thank God we've got a lot of, we've covered a lot of ground so far and we've got some more to go. So uh, as I mentioned, we're in the middle of the ninth chapter uh, of Kohelet of the Book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, the truth is, we kind of had to, we didn't quite finish the last thing we said. So this week's focus is going to be finishing up the last um, discussion uh, before moving on to a related and perhaps um, extension of this discussion, but from a different angle. Um, anyway, so that what we've been discussing so far is, uh, and most of the chapter, the ninth chapter so far, has been discussing the idea of enjoying life. Um, which again, there's a common misconception that uh, the book of Ecclesiastes is a downer of a book. It's something that makes you feel depressed, which if you read it one way, or if you read it probably the way most people read it, that is definitely what it would seem to be doing. Uh, but in reality, uh, or at least how we want to look at it, our theory is that the book of Kohelet is actually an empowering book. <clears throat> Sorry, a little thing in my throat there. Um, but the Book of Kohelet is an empowering uh, piece, and it's trying to give us context and reasons to enjoy our lives and to how to find wisdom. Right. So as we've discussed many times in the past, the first half, half of the book was basically discussing happiness itself, and the second half of the book, for the most part, has been discussing wisdom, how to access wisdom and what are the characteristics of a wise person. <clears throat> So what we've been talking about in the past, most recent verses has been this idea that your average person doesn't get the chance to enjoy life. The average person sees the struggles in life, sees the fact that life ends and says, you know, what's the purpose of it all? Why, why do anything? Uh, the wise person looks at the same thing and says, oh, wow, I better get stuff done. Um, as opposed to saying, why should I bother? The person who, who acts with wisdom is instead going to let the uh, ticking clock on their life, so to speak, be an impetus to do more with their life. And by, through doing that, they not only live a more fulfilling life, a more enriching life, but they actually enjoy the things around them more. So he said that the nature of a wise person is actually, actually to enjoy the things that they eat, to enjoy the things that they wear, the clothing that they wear to make relationships that are important. That's what we saw the last time we were together, uh, which again was about four weeks ago. Um, the, what we saw is that he said that the, the nature of a wise person is, as he said, it's, uh, you know, for a man, in the case of a man, speaking from a man's point of view, uh, seeing as how King Solomon was a man. Uh, so he says, uh, the wise person, goes and gets a, a spouse or gets some takes finds people to care for right whether that's a spouse specifically or not um, but the the a wise person will look to try and make those connections and uh, and, and give give to the people around them okay and the last thing we said right before we went on break was that if a that um, <clears throat> that uh, the wise person, he, he, he pushes us, King Solomon himself pushes us and he says, go do what you can with the powers that you have. Go do whatever you can. If you're given kochot, if you have specific abilities, then use them, right? And that's the nature of a wise person. The nature of a wise person is to take advantage of the, uh, the, their specific talents and to actually go and do something. And so that brings us to this week's uh, uh, verses. Okay, I'm going to go into our screen share. Now, uh, if you haven't joined us in the past, or it's been a while, let's just review this. We don't actually look at the translation 
Uh, there's a very specific reason for that. That is because we want to uh, try to get the most uh, honest or correct um, uh, translation. And so we're trying to look at the root of the words to get a deep, deeper understanding, uh, which is why we don't use, yeah, Meyer is a big fan of that. So uh, we try not to use the, the translation, try to provide our, our own translation. So see this verse over here, verse 11, is a bit of a longer verse. Uh, <clears throat> but he says like this, Shavti vira'o. Okay, Shavti vira'o, meaning uh, I turned around, literally, and saw, or and I see. Uh, there's a discussion of exactly how to understand what is this, what is the syntax of this word vira'o. Uh, but the, specific, the simple understanding is it means I turned around and I saw. Or I do see. Sorry, it's more of a current con present tense, and I do see. Tachat Hashemesh under the sun, ki lo la kalim hameros, that it is not to the swift the race. I mean, the way the race is not won by the swift. Velo la giborim hamilchama, it is not to the strong the war. The war is not won by the strong. Vegam lo la chachamim lechem. The wise also do not have bread. The gam lo la nevonim osher. The the uh, the knowledgeable. That's hard. Okay. The understanding. There you go. People with understanding do not have wealth. The gam lo la yodim chen. And also those who are knowledgeable do not have grace. Ki es vafega yikre et kulam, because time and troubles occur to everyone. Okay. Uh, let's read it one more time before we discuss it. That's what we try to do. Shavti vera'o, I turned around or I looked around again and I saw, or I see, I keep on saying that wrong, and I see, tachat Hashemesh under the sun, kilo la kalim hamerots, that, there is, that the race is not won by the swift, v'lo la giborim hamilchama, the war does not go to the strong, v'gam lo la chachamim lechem, the bread does not go to the wise, or the wise do not have bread, Vigam lo la nevonim osher, and those who understand do not have wealth. Vigam lo leo de imchein, and those who are knowledgeable do not have uh, grace. Ki es vafega yikret et kulam, because time and troubles occur to everyone. So there's a couple of words here that I, I translated one way, but we could take a look at it again. Uh, Rashi points out over here, Rashi is kind of the king of the commentaries, even though we don't often go with his understanding. But Rashi does point out that vira'o is a certain, the, the construction of the word seems to indicate a consistent looking. It's a, uh, not a quick glance necessarily, but it's a, a looking that continues to go. Uh, he links it to other root words that have a similar structure, construction. So the idea of shavti vira'o would be that I see this and I keep on seeing this. It keeps on happening like this. Um, so it's more of a, it's more than just a, a quick glance at the world and saying, oh, this is what I've noticed. It's more of a, no matter where I look, I, I seem to find this show popping up. Okay. So that's the idea of Shavti Vira'o. Okay. Um, Shavti, we've actually had this word a number of times before. Shav means to return. Um, so for example, we have a repentance in Judaism is referred to as Tishuva. That means to return, okay? Um, it's an important point that Jewish repentance is not making up for your sins, but rather returning to the to the one, to, to God. Uh, there's, a different, there's a distinction there. I actually gave a class on that two years ago. So yeah, you can find that on our website also. Um, so the, uh, so again, Shavti Vara'o is kind of this idea that I'm taking a reconsideration but I'm seeing some because I, or rather because I'm seeing something that keeps popping up. Okay. Um, and a lot of the commentaries do understand this shavti as being look at look at everything we just said. I'm actually gonna gonna reconsider it for a second. Now that's not something we want to do necessarily. We were very happy with the last couple of verses and what they meant. They were telling us that you know the wise people have have enjoy life. So that's not, we're we we. We uh, really want to be careful if we're going to say we're reconsidering that. And he's not reconsidering that, as we'll see in a second. Okay, so uh, 
<clears throat> so again, Shabti Vera'o, again, meaning that based on what I actually see in reality, I have to say something a little different than what I've said, than what I just mentioned. And that is that when you look at under the sun, again, whenever we say under the sun, we mean practical in this world, not necessarily a spiritual discussion, but a very this worldly discussion, you'll notice that there are at least, he gives us five groups, okay? Five groups who don't seem to uh, get the job done that they're supposed to get done, okay? Uh, so for example, uh, this is interesting just itself, how many roads is not a, I don't think it ever shows up. I mean, that, I can't say that for sure. I don't know the Tanakh backwards and forwards, but I, I doubt that that, that that construction really shows up very often, if at all, anywhere else. Uh, the root over there would be ruts to run. So may roads would be a place to run or a situation of running. So the kalim, those who are swift, uh, which is a common phrase in, in Tanakh, the swift do not seem to win the race. Um, so that's a... Uh, a uh, it's kind of interesting because we, I was raised at least, I'm sure most people were, on Aesop's fables, um, and we have the story of the tortoise and the hare, right? And that's really the lesson, right? The tortoise and the hare, the lesson is that slow and steady wins the race, you know, to the point where I think most people don't even think twice when they say that phrase, slow and steady wins the race, that what that means is you're referencing the, the Aesop's fable. I think it's Aesop's, Aesop, but either way. Even if it's not, it's 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 as ubiquitous as Aesop's fable. Um, so the swift do not necessarily win races. In fact, he just says the swift do not win races. The strong do not win wars. The wise do not have bread. The the understanding do not have wealth, and those who know do not have grace. So these are very interesting things. The the first two are obvious. Uh, there's an obvious connection between the the, the 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 skill and what's expected to be completed, right? So the skill of a swift person you would expect would be to have the ability to win a race. The skill of a strong person would be to win a battle. Um, so there, there's a kind of a more obvious connection uh, between the fact that he says they don't, the swift don't win the races, the strong don't win the wars. Uh, I mean, we have that in Jewish history for sure. We've got the story of the Hashmonaim, uh, the, uh, the, the Hanukkah story, where the, 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 the strong did not win the war, the weak won the war. Um, but then the next three are not as obviously connected. Um, but it, in a certain way, they are. Uh, the wise, somebody who has wisdom, you would, uh, you would believe, you would think at least that they would have the ability to at least get their own bread. You know, Bread is, a, is the most basic need that a person has. Uh, bread meaning just food in general. Um, so their basic needs, the wise person should be should be able to to achieve, uh, but he says that you find that it's not the case. Uh, somebody who's understanding and in Judaism understanding is a very specific thing. This word navon, the nivonim, is a wise person who has understanding. Um, the the root there is but 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 let me see how it is, bona or yeah, which can basically means understanding. But it's very much connected to the word for building. Uh, binyan, bona is also building. So bina and bona, that's, sorry, that's what it is. Bina is understanding, bona is building. They are connected, actually, because to when you build something, you take disparate items and you put them together and you build something. So bina is a very specific form of understanding that you're able to take, you're able to uh, not just have information, be able to analyze and synthesize the information. Okay, it's in Hebrew. It's referred to as mivin davar mitoch davar. They're able to understand one thing out of another thing. Okay, so it's synthesis, in other words. Um, so I, what I always kind of understand is that chachma is analysis, that is the ability to to analyze something. Bina is synthesis. So an analyst should be able to at least figure out where to get bread from. Should be able to figure out how to survive on their daily, you know, have their daily needs. Somebody who's a synthesis, synthesis, yeah, somebody who's able to do synthesis should be able to not only figure that out, but actually go beyond that and understand how to gain wealth. Wealth is much, much more than bread, right? Wealth is actually to amass wealth. 
Um, but what he says again over here is that neither of these groups, I notice that neither of these groups seem to get the things that they need. And then the, four, the fifth category is even more uh, distant, I would say, from its its thing, its uh, its outcome, uh, is the yodim, those who know. So to know something is is usually actually a lower level than wisdom or understanding is knowledge, just having raw information. For those who ha are yodim, they do not have chen, they do not have grace. So chen in this sense would be the ability to connect with other people. Okay, so at the very least you would expect that somebody who's a knowledgeable person, whether they're, in, whether they're necessarily smart is a different question, but if they're a knowledgeable person, you'd at least accept, expect that they should be able to uh, connect socially with other people. And he says, what we find is that they are not able to do that. They do, they do not have that ability. Rabbi, I have a but, question. Yes. On the word chain that appears yeah. in Mishlei and uh, Asia Chayo verses, at the last chapter, last sentence of Eishet Chayot, can you talk about the meaning of pain in that context as well? That's a good question. Um, so in in Eishet Chayot, sorry, you know, you talked about Havel Hayofi, right? <laughs> so yes, the esteem, and so can we just unpack those the verses about pain in there too as well, please? Sure, absolutely. Um, and I think that's a good that's a good idea because it's. It gives us a better understanding of what's going on over here. Um, chen, again, seems to be this idea, and at least in, in, in popular Hebrew, I would say, popular Hebrew, <laughs> the way we speak, chen generally means the ability that a person has to get people to like them. Um, so it's a almost like a popularity, I would say, um, but it's, it's deeper than that. It's not simply the ability to be popular. It's the ability to connect with people socially. So in the in in Eishet Chayel again the, the the concluding verses as you pointed out the concluding verses of of Mishlei, of Proverbs um, we, we're told actually the concluding verse of Proverbs we're told that Sheker Hachem Behevel Ayofi that Chaim this ability is actually false it's it's it, it's um, it's a lie you know <laughs> Chaim is a lie so to speak um, that. You know, I'd have to take a deeper look, perhaps, at Eishel Chayel to see exactly why he's saying that. But at least in the um, in the parable there that we're referring to, the the Eishel Chayel, the the woman of valor, uh, it's I believe what it's saying is that it's more the more the actions that a person does than the connections that, that they make. You know, like we say, it's not what you know; it's who you know. It's actually the opposite. It's saying it's it's not who you know. It's the, uh, that makes you a special person, a good person. It's what you do with what you have. Um, that's what I would think over there. Again, I'd have to take a deeper look at it just to make sure that I, I'm getting that right. I mean, I say it every yeah, week. I think, the, that, I think that he's preferring, um, you know, Adonai, so a woman who sees Hashem, who looks up to Hashem, is, is, has more valor than one who, you know, is successful socially. With, with right. Versus Ishat, Ishat Adonai. Right, that's a good point. Yeah, let me think for a second. Sheker Hachin the Hevel Hayofi. So he is comparing, comparing Hain and Yofi, which is beauty. Isha Yirat Hashem Kiti Talal, and that a woman who fears Hashem um, is praiseworthy. So I would assume that. Uh, yeah, it seems to be a contrast between those two things. Now, they don't have to be different. They don't have to be opposites, which is interesting. Um, but it is, I think it's more just saying that those two, they, they both, one's more important than the other. <laughs> uh, and and chain will only get you so far. Um, anyway, yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, in, our, in regards to our verse over here, it I, I think it's just simple to say that we're talking about chain in the sense of the of of a, being able to create social relationships, um, and we would expect that somebody who has a certain level of knowledge, uh, a knowledgeable person, would be able to do that. He says, realistically, that's not the case. So what I see over here, thank you for bringing that up, Jake. Yeah, it's a it's it's a common word. Um, it's possible. 
that I would have to look this up to be, to be certain that chen is related to the idea of chinam, something that is free. Uh, chinam means free, F-R-E-E. -E. Um, so uh, in the sense when we ask, we, we, uh, when Moses, after the golden calf, Moses was given a certain um, formula to recite whenever the Jewish people make a mistake so that uh, Hashem, God will provide forgiveness. So it says, Hashem, Hashem, Kel, Rachum, Chanun, that Hashem, Hashem, right? God, God, the, the, the God who is merciful and compassionate is usually how it's, how it's translated. Pain there, Chanun means he's compassionate. He grants favor. So he is favorful. Um, so Chain there does seem to also indicate this idea of being able to connect but it's almost with a freedom. There is also this concept of freedom. Hey, I don't want to get too stuck in the weeds necessarily. Um, but what we do find, again, what we do find is that here, these people would be expected to have these abilities. These skills should have these outcomes, but they don't. So uh, what I see over here, again, is the difference between his idealism of the previous verses and his practicality coming up in this verse. So in the last couple of verses, he showed us that a wise person should be loving life, should be enjoying life, should be uh, should be making connections with other people, should be, you know, just every time that they get a chance to eat something, they should be filled with a joy that they're living in this world. That's how a wise person should act. Um, if you follow the if you follow it properly, that's really what you should be experiencing. Kind of this this uh, extreme supremely sensory and sensual experience of life, I would think, um, if a person actually accessed and used their wisdom. Uh, but what you find is not is that it's not the case. So you find that these five groups, and these, is ju these are just kind of uh, placeholders for everybody. What you find is that people with their skills do not have the expected outcomes. There is a disconnect between our skills, our abilities, and the actual outcome. OK, <clears throat> and that definitely seems to be the main idea over here that he's pointing out in this verse is that the reality is my idealism again, my idealism of the last couple of verses does not actually play out in reality. In reality, what you find is that most people are hares and not tortoises, right? Most people are the type of people who take their skill, rest on their laurels. They don't they don't uh, uh, ex they don't work hard to use the skills that they have. And they end up not with the things that they're expected to create. They, the, the swift, those who are able to run quickly, do not end up winning races. You know, uh, obviously, people who win races must have some skill, um, and people who win wars must have some strength. But that doesn't necessarily mean. And in fact, he's saying more often than not, that's that shavti vera o. Oh, I see this constantly showing up. Is that the person you're expecting, the skill that you're expecting, does not have the outcome you're expecting. Okay, and he says there's a reason for that. He ate vafegayik red kulam because two conditions have affected every single person or all these people. Okay, number one is time. Okay, time gets in the way, and fega, which is an interesting word itself, fega literally means a to be hit, h i t to be hit by something, um, uh, or to be to run into something basically. Uh, trying to think of a good example of that. I mean, from, from scripture elsewhere where we find that word, can't think of any off the top of my head. Uh, <clears throat> but the idea is that there are two, two factors that seem to get in the way of people's success. Even though they have the skills, they run into two problems. Number one is time. And that's an obvious one, right? People run out of the time. They think that they have this skill for an extended period of time. Turns out that the skill is actually only limited. You know, they're only going to be strong for a certain period of time. They're only going to be fast for, for a short period of time. Life keeps on moving while a person's skills slowly go away. They don't stick around forever. The wise uh, may have planned on using their wisdom at some point to get their bread. Well, they're going to end up with no bread and at the end of the day, uh, a diminished wisdom, likely. Right. So what he's saying is, that the, the reality is a person should be taking their opportunity and 
and looking through, taking inventory of their skills and actually acting on it, not just waiting for the right moment because the right moment doesn't necessarily come because eight, time occurs to everybody. And the other thing is fega, is things happen, okay? So besides for time happening and mismanaged time, there's also just the reality of life that things get in the way, okay? Um, <clears throat> uh, their own needs could get in the way. If you're burdened by your own needs or the needs of helping other people or physical or mental incapacity or something like that, that's all kind of under the category of fega. So the reality is that people are not able to go through you, the wise, the strong, the swift. They're not able to do the things that they're supposed to do because number one, they, uh, they, they mismanage their time. And number two is they let things get in the way. Okay, let things get in the way. That was, that was me being judgmental. Okay, I said they let things get in the way. But he says that things get in the way. You create kulam, it occurs to everybody. Okay. Yikra is an interesting word just in of itself. Yikra means it occurs. Okay, A uh, very specific terminology over there, meaning that it happens really by coincidence. The idea of yikra is for something to happen by coincidence. We find that by um, Bilam, the, the wicked Bilam, the, the, uh, who tried to curse the Jewish people, it says that God occurred to him. It never says that God called to him, which would be yikra with an olive. It's yikra with a hay. God occurred to him, because we don't want to say that God called out to such a wicked person. And God ha happened upon him, which of course doesn't, God, nothing happens coincidental with God. Um, anyway, but the idea over here is that these things are, are coincidence. What I read over here is these are the words of the people. When the swift person, you ask him, why didn't you win the race? He says, ah, ki etofega yekret kulam, everybody has, has time and troubles and needs, they get in the way. When you ask the wise person why they don't have bread, I hear that response of, oh, you know, time, troubles, they get in the way. You know, things happen. Okay, things happen. Um, which really, I mean, that's, it's true. Things do happen. <laughs> things very much do happen. And they get in the way of, our, of things in life. Um, but they're also, we have to be wary of excuses. I think that's what he's going to be bringing up in the next verse. So I don't want to get get too into it in this verse. Let's see the next verse over here, verse 12. <clears throat> if this is a very interesting verse. I found this verse quite interesting. <clears throat> he says like this, He, because gam lo adam etito, a person does not know their time, right? A person does not know when their time is. Now that could be, you know what, before I, before I discuss it, let's read the whole verse. Like fish that are caught in a bad trap. And like birds that are trapped in a, in a, in a that are caught in a net. Just like them, people are trapped. At a bad time. When things come upon them suddenly. All right, let's read that verse one more time. A lot of, lot of interesting words over here. A person does not know their time. <clears throat> like fish who are caught in a bad trap. And like birds that are caught, that are, are, are held by a net. Just like them, people, you know, humankind are trapped at a bad time. When things happen to the court to them suddenly. Um, so what I actually see over here, and I, I didn't see this before, but as I'm reading this, I see this showing up. We, what do we have? It keeps on saying over here, time. Right? People do not know their time. When the bad time falls upon a person suddenly. So, and that's, we had time in the last verse too. Right? What is it that stops the, the swift from winning the race? Right? Why is everybody a, a hare and not a tortoise? Because of time. I, I see a message over here almost of you got to figure out how to manage your time. <laughs> you know, time is something that is very quickly wasted and very quickly falls away. So people don't know their time. 
doesn't necessarily mean the time of their death. We usually would say his time is up, right? Or their, their time has come. We're thinking of their their full, you know, end of the day, end of the day time. But I think there's something here also that people don't know their time. They don't know how to manage their time. Um, and because they get caught in traps in the middle, so that when a bad time cup, bad times come suddenly, you know, ask a person who's very who doesn't know how to manage their time, and there's always a crisis going, right? If somebody is not very good at managing their time, they're always in crisis. They're always, you know, I have to take care of this because I have to take care of that. You know, ask somebody who does have their time managed. It's quite the opposite. That person is able to say, um, yeah, you know what? I will make time for that. Uh, when I have time, I'll take care of that. But it's not a, it's not a, it's not a constant crisis. This speaks to me personally because I'm not a very good time manager. So uh, I, uh, as I'm reading this, I see a, a a rebuke to myself over here that time is is an important thing to be wary of. Uh, his two, uh, he has two parables over here uh, that are or proverbs over here that are are very interesting and they share a characters characteristic as we'll see. First of all, I have to I have to address what this is. We said that there's fish that are caught in a bad trap. So the Talmud over here, I don't know if it's a Talmud or a Midrash, whatever, the sages of the Talmudic era, they ask, what's a bad trap? Are there good traps? There's bad trap. What's a bad trap? So they point out, and I think this is very enlightening, they point out that it's a fish hook. It's referring to a fish hook. <clears throat> I hope that comes out over the Zoom properly. Fish hook. Okay, a, right? So as opposed to, there's different ways of trapping fish. You know, you see, see you watch videos on YouTube of people, they Dynamite fish, you know, they, they'll throw dynamite into a lake, you know, or you could catch it with a with a trawler or a net or any sort of thing like that. He doesn't actually bring up the net here. The net's by the by the birds. Um, but what he says over here is uh, what we're talking about specifically is a fish hook, right? So something that will be used by the fishermen, by the fisher, fish, by the fisher to go and catch a fish. Okay. Uh, and the nature of a fish hook is that the fish swallows it. And gets caught and then gets is able to be pulled up. We have a similar thing over here. We've got the, the bird who's caught in a net. Okay, this is not necessarily that it, it, bird nets and 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 fish nets are a little different. I don't actually know what a bird net is. Come to think of it, I don't know. If, I don't know of a bird that's caught with a net. Um, you have to think about that for a little bit. I, yeah, um, but in general, birds you wouldn't necessarily catch a. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think you would catch a bird with a net. But what you see by there's the common theme by both these things is that the fish and the bird both have ways of avoiding the problem. Okay. Uh, fish do not have to eat the hook. They do not have to eat the fish hook. When they eat the, the fish hook, they take it on themselves. Now, obviously, they don't necessarily realize what they're doing at the time. But the, nature, the difference between a fish hook as opposed to some other way of catching fish is that the fish has made a conscious decision to do the action that's got them caught. Uh, I would say there's a similarity also when it comes to the bird. Birds are able to fly. They can avoid this entire problem. They can avoid the problem of being caught at all if they get kept on moving. Uh, but instead, they get caught in a net of some sort. So what I see is the similarity between these two parables is that it's the problem is brought on by the by the character itself. The fish goes and bites the hook. The bird basically falls into the trap, flies into the trap that the, that the hunter has set out for them. So in the same way, we entrap ourselves. Um, and because we are not very good at managing our skills, basically the discussion over here is, it becomes, we have skills. A wise person is able to take inventory of their skills and be active with them, proactive with them. But the nature of things is that we get bogged down by self-inflicted uh, traps. We trap and trap ourselves. We trap ourselves into situations where we cannot use our skills. So very much like in the case of the tortoise and the hare, right? It's actually just a great, great connection over there. The, the problem with the hare, the hare could easily win the race. That's that is the that is I mean that is the lesson of the tortoise and the hare. It's that if they had just kept up with the race and not taken their naps or whatever it was that I don't remember 
long time since I was a little kid, but the, uh, the idea being that the hair could win the race. There's nothing stopping it from, from it, and it's stopping the, the hair from winning the race. In fact, the, the axiom, slow and steady wins the race, is, is almost not correct. Fast and steady also wins the race. Steady wins the race, right? It's all about the steady. Uh, being able to manage time, being able to manage things as they pop up, management, having the ability to manage things as they, as they show up and manage time properly, that's what's going to avoid these problems. So he's almost, it, what it seems to me is that he's, he's combating, he's fighting against that thing that, that these groups of people said in the last verse, said, well, these things happen to everyone. You know, the swift aren't, they won the race. It happens to everybody. You know, the, the strong don't win the war. Happens to everybody. That's basically what it said in the last verse. He says, yeah, it happens to everybody because they're not managing themselves properly. People, are you kashim b'nei adam la'etra'ah? People get caught at a bad time. You caught me at a bad time, right? Quite literally. People get caught at a bad time because of self-inflicted problems. Because just like fish get caught in the fish hook and birds, instead of just flying, and fly somewhere else, go somewhere else, they get caught in their own traps. So I think he's saying, one of the things he's saying over here, is the nature of these, of what, again, this whole chapter has been the distinction between the wise and your average person. And he says a wise person goes ahead and sees the skills that they have, sees the life that they have, sees all the wonderful gifts that they have, and says, I'm going to be proactive. I'm going to enjoy life to the fullest. I'm going to to uh, to enjoy every bite of food that I have. I'm going to take my skills and contribute to the world and make connections and make relationships and things. That anybody who doesn't do that immediately falls back on the on the on the excuse. Happens to everybody, right? That's the it happens to everybody. But in reality, I think what he's saying over here is when you say it happens to everybody, that's because everybody <laughs> makes the same mistake. Everybody bites the fish hook, right? Uh, uh, instead of, again, that, that kind of constant focus over here on eight, on a person's time, man, time management is an important thing. Uh, time management doesn't just allow a person to manage to, be, to use their skills in a timely manner, but it also avoids the other problem of when things happen, fall on them suddenly. Pitom means suddenly. Okay? Um, so, that's that fega that we mentioned in the last verse uh, of something that just kind of like, you know, things happen. It's outside of the time. No, it's not, it's not that I, I, I waited too long. It's just that things happen. Well, when things happen, good time management or good management in general uh, is going to allow a person to be wary and be ready for those things to happen and to uh, be more prepared to use their skills. Again, it's not slow and steady where it wins the, wins the race. It's just steady wins the race. You know, it, it, you could be fast and steady and win the race too. Ask, uh, you know, a lot of Kenyans have been winning a lot of uh, 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 marathons for a long time because they are fast, you know, <laughs> not just because they're steady, but because they're fast too. So the idea again is to figure out your own skills and then figure out how you can use them now, proactively now, while they're available, while you have them. Uh, because again, skills come and they skills go, they come and disappear. I would say that in a certain sense, this is the, this is the test of whether somebody really loves life uh, because that's been the focus over here. You want to love life and love your experience living. Okay, what's the test? The test is how proactive are you? How careful are you with your time? That's gonna be the real test of whether somebody loves life uh, and is careful and, and is, is doing the most with their life that they can. Um, Again, it's hard. I, I again, I take this as a as a personal kind of rebuke because I, I struggle with this myself. I'm not a very good time manager. My wife is a time manager. She knows how to do stuff really well like that. I'm not so great at that. Um, so I, it's something that I have to constantly keep on thinking about and working on and being being focused on because I know that something that I I could be a fish over here in this case. Um, it's interesting just because besides for that, King Solomon pointed out the wise. So the wise don't have bread. And the sages point out that there's a story uh, in, in Jewish lore and legend, basically, King Solomon at a certain point lost his kingship. It's not, it's not recorded anywhere in Tanakh. It's a legend that we have. 
uh, which is according to the Talmud, that he got into a big, long, way, way too long of a story to, to discuss here, but he got into a big fight with the king of the demons, and the king of demons chucked him 500 countries away or something like that, and he had to walk back to Jerusalem. Um, okay, the idea being that it's basically at some point King Solomon la- lost his kingship. He didn't have the same control over things. He didn't, and, and the way he puts it, he didn't even have his own food. He had to go begging for food. Um, again, is, is this a parable? Is it a, a you know, kind of an allegory? I, I'm not going to get into that discussion. But King Solomon himself is re- rebuking himself over here. And he says, I'm a wise person. I'm the wisest of all people, right? <laughs> the wisest of all people to ever live. And I myself had to go beg for bread because of my own mismanagement of, of you know, my life. Um, so the sages do understand that there's a, a personal message that King Solomon is saying to himself over here also, that uh, his mismanagement led him to his own uh, issues. And again, that's kind of the King Solomon story, if you know the, the longer story of, of everything, of, of the end of King Solomon's life is that he did struggle uh, with managing his own skills uh, and, and not getting in his own way. Uh, the reason why this is a good ending is you'll see that the coming verse uh, is going to be discussing a whole whole new topic, a related, but a whole new topic. So we're going to stop here. We're at time anyway. So uh, let's go back into the main thing. All right, here we go. Thank you for joining us. Glad, glad to see uh, a lot of people back after, uh, after Passover. I um, hope to see you again next week. 